like a rusty Medusa head. Like a shop vac fighting an octopus. Not a ball of plastic and aluminum. Not some sort of failed science experiment. No. Wow. Your dino's broken. <laughs> <laughs> Always exciting getting an engine on the stand, Joe. Well, yeah, I mean, this is just as it came from off the truck from the junkyard. So get it up on the stand and see what we got. It's a fairly low mileage 5.3 out of a 04 Sierra. So we don't have to deal with any of the, the displacement on demand. Sure, no. yeah. None of the lifter failures, you know, that kind of good stuff. Yeah. It's a good looking motor, new water pump. Yeah, pretty yeah, clean. Let's just, let's just run that water pump. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Not a big grease ball like some of them you see. Yeah, yeah, I think it'll clean up good. We'll cut the filter and make sure it's make sure there's nothing nasty going on inside. Get this beast up on the stand, shall we? All right, there we go. Right. She's hanging. Oh, it's gonna be. It's gonna run great. I got no doubts. These LS machines are just amazing. You see them with 300, 400,000 miles still run strong. It's, they're pretty amazing. Before we just start ripping stuff off of here, what, what should we be paying attention to so that we can replicate it when we're, because we'll, we'll do like a Holly Terminator on this when we put yeah. it back together. So what should we make sure that we pay attention to, make sure we save? We'll keep the temp sensor on that side, crank sensor down here, injector plugs, you will end up, those are a little bit touchy to get undone, but you know, be careful you don't crack an injector or anything doing that. But other than that, it's pretty straightforward. Let's get her tore apart, shall we? All right. You got a 10 millimeter out yet? Yep. You I found got a quarter it? inch drive, so you found the 10 millimeter? Oh <laughs> my gosh. Yes. Isn't that cute? <laughs> Cutest little starters ever. There we go. Here we are. Take the carcass off. Here you go. It's been a while since they changed plugs on this thing. Lots of bloody knuckles from LS plug wires. The next thing here is can be somewhat of a challenge, just pulling the exhaust manifolds off these things. Um, as you can see, this one's got the exhaust bolt broken off, both the front and the back, which is super common. A lot of times the first two and back two end up getting snapped off. And there you can kind of see the bolts I was talking about. There, that one's sticking out of the head, which makes it a little bit easier to get out. Another fun note on these motors <laughs> is the dipstick going down through the exhaust manifold. If you look at this, um, you can't get the manifold off because you've got this tab here that holds the dipstick in place. And many of men have tried to take these dipsticks out <laughs> successfully without snapping them off in the block. <laughs> so we're going to see if we're one of those men. Or you can just tell how rock solid that thing is. What a person needs to do is put some heat down around here and then carefully get on that and try to walk that back and forth to get that out of there. There it goes. Yep. Heat is the only way to do that without snapping those off, typically. So, nice. What's this one have one snapped off one or they actually, yep, just one snapped oh, off man. one. Oh man, so only three? I mean, that's pretty, that's pretty decent. We could put some splash cups on one of those and give it a shot and see if it'll come out with some try heat. It. And try one with some heat. We can got two of them we can try. Then the other one will have to be welded on. Well, the only one that's left is the one that's broke off under the surface of the cylinder head. A little trick is we're gonna weld this nut to the broken off stud and pull it out that way.
Look at that. First try. Those stuck exhaust bolts is a, is a huge, huge problem with these things. The manifolds contract and expand and they snap the bolts off and any little pro tip you can get like that, like welding the nut onto it and getting them making it make your life easier is definitely a plus. You get the rest of this AC bracket off quick. And there's the accessories. Uh, All in a fashion bracket. We can see a head. We can see an engine. Wow. Do you want to pull the water pump, make a mess now, and then we're done with the front of the motor? Turns out there's an engine under there, so next step is to clean it up a little bit and do our cam swap and see if we can get it to run. Looks much nicer than we got here. Yeah, you walk into the shop and it looks like you got an engine on a stand. Yeah, exactly. Not, not some sort of failed science experiment. Exactly, not a ball of plastic and aluminum. <laughs> We're gonna wash this thing off quick before we start working on it. We're using this LS block off kit that we sell which you know, is handy if you're gonna store an engine, but it's also handy if you're gonna, gonna wash it off. And uh, if it's gonna sit for long, you don't wanna make sure to spray some WD-40 uh, you know, into the exhaust ports and into the spark plug holes. But since this is only gonna sit for five minutes until we rip it apart, uh, we're not super worried about it here. Yeah. Always. I mean, I don't see anything. I don't see anything. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't see anything that looks too dicey in here, but we need to get Zach over here to look at this and tell us if it's any good or not. All right, we got the pan off, Zach. You want to take a look and see if there's anything, anything that scares you? Yeah, the crosshatch looks good in the cylinders. Normal amount of carbon buildup, but. I mean, and in this version of it, we're not like throwing a bunch of boost at it or anything. Right. You know, if, we, if we do, you know, we'll obviously, we'll upgrade all the hardware and change out the bearings. And... That turns yeah. over nice and free. We played the LS lottery and maybe maybe won yeah. this round. It didn't feel like you went past a bunch of rust anywhere in those red no, versions at least, good. so that was good. Well, let's get a cam in this thing. Oh, you can't beat an LS engine for power and reliability and even fuel mileage. You know, by throwing this cam, and this is a very mild cam, we'll probably pick up 25, 30 horsepower with it. And, you know, you get 350 horse plus for just an average driver. It's going to make for a fun rider. So the next thing we need to do is pull the balancer off. It has no bolt holes in it. So we have a special puller that hooks in behind the puller to pull them off. It's really clean. That looks beautiful, actually. Is that the, the PCV side? Oil cap. The oil fill cap is uh, was broken off inside of there, but short of that, it looks great. Does the timing set look okay? It, it doesn't look too bad. I uh, pulled it. A new one, if you want. Yeah. To. I mean, it, it's it's loose. Yeah. But that, you know, when you put a new one on, it's not going to be substantially tighter than that. See, so there's the PCV side. Is that <laughs> That's what you usually find. Right. Oh yeah, a little just more. a little dirtier. Get these rocker arms off and put them on the bench and inspect them for wear and make sure everything looks good there. We're putting a trunnion upgrade kit in them from the factory. They come with a bunch of needle bearings in there and after 130,000 miles, that's, that's what the rocker actually rotates on. Just a good idea if you want to put a little bit more power, a little bigger cam to put a trunnion upgrade kit in it replaces all those needle bearings with either new needle bearings or bushings, either way. So to add to what uh, Jeff was saying, another reason to replace the fulcrum bearings is the, the factory rocker has a flat spot on the fulcrum here and it limits the amount of lift you can have around somewhere around 530 lift in that ballpark. So the, the new fulcrum upgrade we'll put in will be a full round unit. And at this point in time, you spin the cam and it'll push the lifters back up in the lifter trays so you can remove the camshaft. So if you were in the vehicle doing it, there's a neat little trick, take a wooden dowel rod, st stick it down here and it holds the lifter up. Since we have an on-inch stand, we could just turn it upside down 
not everybody's gonna pull their engine to change the camshaft. So we're gonna show you how this is done like it would be in the vehicle. It's a 5 16 wooden dowel rod. Just buy at the hardware store. It's a snug fit. It should be because you're using them to hold the lifters in place. And now that those are in, the lifters can't fall. Use this to uh, pull the cam out. So we're gonna install this Brian Tooley truck Norris cam. And it's a great camshaft for pickups and street cars that uh, you don't have to change the converter in. It'll sound great. Has about around 550 lift. Should make great mid-range power low-end power, should be a lot of fun to drive. Put another cam bolt in so you can have a handle to turn it over nice. And again, point the dowel pin over towards number one. All right, now the cam's in place. We can remove the dowel rods. Okay, so now we're going to change these valve springs out, the stock valve springs. This is the valve spring compressor tool that comes with the um, kit that we purchased for this job. Pull it down to the head just like so. All right, now what we're going to do is tighten that nut down. It's going to compress the springs. He's got air inside the cylinder holding the valve so they can't let the uh, valves drop down the cylinder when we have the springs off the engine. They're seated all the way down. Set them on there. You install the valve locks again, one at a time. And you only want to compress it far enough to get the locks in. All right, so we're planning on just putting the can back in this thing and putting it all back together. Uh, we were inspecting all the parts on this motor after we had it apart and we noticed some strange wear on the push rods of this engine here. So we're going to go ahead and err on the cautious side here and we're going to pull the heads off. We're going to have the lifters all replaced, new lifter valley trays, and as well as the uh, rocker arms. Half of these have got some funny wear on this side of the motor as well. And you notice it's kind of an egg shape to the uh, rocker where they meet the uh, push rods. So something else to look for when you're doing a cam swap. Oh my. Hey Joe. What is there a dead mouse in there or something? <laughs> I thought you I thought you said that the little little pillow was supposed to keep the crap out. There's right always all sorts of good stuff in these things. They've got kind of a foam thing it's supposed to keep the dust and debris from getting in there. As you can see it doesn't do a real great job. I've never actually seen these fight too much. They're always full of stuff down in here, but <laughs> I just about even got the shit out of there. <laughs> I was that close. <laughs> Almost succeeded there. These are probably the easiest head bolts, Zach. I've cracked loose on these things for a while. Yeah, so the impact will pull these right out. Oh, yeah. Looks really good. Yeah, the cylinder hone looks amazing on it. No, it's cross edge. Isn't that crazy? 130,000 miles. That is insane. All right, you're going to take the heads, and the heads and the springs, and we'll come back all cleaned up. We're going to do rockers and paint. Yeah. What 
The 10 millimeter socket, weird. You're looking for a 10 millimeter <laughs> socket. I'm yeah, really looking for a 10. A I get, that's an eight, isn't it? No, that's a 10. Oh, okay, that's why. Quarter drive. Wow. You gotta be one of these motors, huh? All right, we got our short block all cleaned up and painted. Zach took our heads to the machine shop and surfaced them, so we're ready to go back together with everything. We're replacing the stock lifters with the LS7 lifter that Speedway sells as a DOD replacement lifter. While we're at it, we're gonna go ahead and put new buckets in here. Cup is all slippery. I wonder why. We're in the process of changing the fulcrum bearings in these stock rocker arms. We have a kit from Speedway Motors uh, that makes this process easy to do at home in your in your vise. Put the removal tool in, just two pieces, press it together, a couple turns, pops apart, throw away the old bearings, and it's removed. So then to put the new fulcrum bearings in, uh, there's there's two new bearings in this new fulcrum that uh, spins 360 degrees around. Uh, and then to assemble it, you go back into the vise and you just use these two washers on the other side uh, as spacers to be able to push the bearings all the way in. It's just a matter of lining it up in the vise and squeezing it together. Make sure they're seated in the groove. They're ready to go back on the motor. You want to watch for is make sure your flat spots on your trunnions are all facing up. There's a flat spot where the bolt head seats. Do the valley pan valve covers, then we'll flip it over. Oil pump. Oil pump. Yep. Okay. That way you're ready to put the pickup on and the windage tray and all that. Get all this nice, pretty new hardware started, shall we? You want to put the oil pump on, I'll put the valve covers on. Sure. Oil pumps in place. There's all sorts of fancy valve covers you can use that have covers for the coils and things like that. These are just a really straightforward black valve cover that leaves the coil packs exposed. And I don't really have a problem with seeing coil packs in a car like this. Uh, you know, you have the benefit of having a nice short plug wire. Uh, you know, rather than having them relocated and having four foot long plug wires all over the place. So I think this is going to look nice. I'm going to grab a launch when you get these bolts in. <laughs> let me give it, let me give it one shot. No, <laughs> come no, on, come on, no, no way. <laughs> You're like, nope, I got to get these in now. Oh man, how is there still water in this? Thing? I don't know, dude. <laughs> These things are like a never ending leak fest. There you go, just let her leak. Oh, that looks nice with that black stuff on it. It really is. I love the silver hardware on the black. We already doped them up with NACs and gapped them to 42 thousandths. 
and that we're ready to install. We're gonna put a three to four bolt throttle by adapter on. Get the four bolt throttle body bolt to the four bolt, the three bolt adapter here. Looks a lot better than it did, right? Absolutely. Look a lot more complete. All right, next step, dyno. Get a balancer for it. Get the terminator on it, which we'll do. We'll just plug it all in over there at the dyno. I'm excited to hear another open header LS fire up. Hear that truck Norris cam chopping away. All right, we're here at the Speedway Motors racing engines. They were kind enough to let us use their dyno. You know, we're gonna hook up our Holley Terminator is what we're working on right now. And this will allow us to kind of get a baseline tune in it. So when we put it in the truck and we turn the key, you know, we've kind of got a baseline in it. We know it's gonna run. And, you know, it's also gonna be cool to know how much power it's gonna make. Oh, I love dyno day. Anytime you can have an engine just sitting here out in the open staring at you, revving at 6,500, 7,000 RPM, that's what Dino Day is all about. Yeah, bringing something that's sitting in a junkyard months ago onto the stand ready to run here is pretty exciting. Maybe what we'll do when we get done here, just take a bunch of zip ties, or at least a couple of them, just wad this stuff all up so it's kind of flowing. I appreciate, Jeff, the way that our OCD complements each other. Like, I don't really care what the wiring looks like on the dyno, but you do, and and by God. And you're the one bless masking you for off it. the engine block before painting it. <laughs> and, and, and touching up the paint with a paint pen. And I'm going lay a rag on it and spray the hay. <laughs> that was actually pretty good. So between the two of us, we could just not get anything done together. Oh yeah, and it looked pretty when it's all yeah, done. But it would look beautiful. Gentlemen, we're hooked up, except for power. We're getting ready to run through the uh, setup on the Terminator X. Okay, so the first thing you got to do on it is you got to run through the uh, TPS Auto Set Wizard, which gives you the TPS sensor positioning. Joe, pull the throttle all the way open and then back down twice. TPS was successful, so we got that done. GMLS, the top one. Eight cylinders. Your, your guess is for horsepower is what we need to get established right now. I'm gonna go with, I'm gonna go, this thing says it's 382 horsepower. Wow. I always guess low. I wanna be, I wanna be, I wanna under promise and over deliver. Yep. So I'm gonna say 350. I'm the dyno operator, so I can make it make however much power I want. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't count. You so don't I'm never wrong. <laughs> So yeah, I think it'll make three, 372 is my guess. I think it says something about what kind of person you are. You're either really excited every time you put an engine on the dyno or you're really nervous. And I'm like some combination of the two, but I always have butterflies in my stomach whenever we do this. I'm, I'm excited to see what it's gonna do. It's been spinning for 150,000 miles. Let's spin it some more. Just a little faster and harder this time than usual, you know? It's gonna be fine. Nervous Nelly versus Send It. <laughs> so the first pull we're gonna make is gonna be just 3,000 RPM to 5,500. Uh, we may have to play with uh, the dyno settings just so we can uh, manage the torque at the low RPM to make clean dyno pulls. over 400 in that pool. Made 420. 420? Wow. I guess 385. What? I was way off. 422. And he, he short four, pulled four, it. 422 foot-pounds of torque. 419 horsepower. No. 
Wow. Your dino's broken. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's interesting, Zach, is that Holly needs to learn. That thing's like nine to one or 10 to one AFR. Yeah, it, uh, it's learning for sure. I can't leave out of the box. One hour threw it on there and this thing is just spinning like this. It's beautiful. Yeah, it would make even more if you put more timing in it at wide open throttle. Yeah. You know, if you bumped it up. 28 or something, 28, 29. yeah, so say 28, I don't. I mean, I could, I could do that really easy, just add yeah. two degrees, but. It would, it would definitely like it. You want me to add two? Add do two. Do one more pull? Add two. Let's do it. So this is how easy it is to change timing on this thing. I just went into the ignition timing and wide open throttle. Done. Last but not least, let's see what adding two degrees of timing does to this thing. It likes it. 429. It broadened it out a little bit. Yeah. Basically yeah. flattened it out. It's Basically 429, 429, you know, it's... Wow. <laughs> 430 horse, 430 torque, out of a junkyard, 5.3 yeah. with a cam. You do another one? We're going to do another pull. I'm going to turn at 68. Must be what our rev chip set at. Yep. <laughs> our rev chip must be at 67. <laughs> it's making over 400 horsepower from 4,900 to wow. 67. It's it almost makes 2,000 RPM. Yeah, it makes 400 foot pounds of torque at 3,200, 3,300, and it's still making 400 foot pounds of torque at 5,700. The camshaft runs really well. I was impressed by the narrow lobe separation, how well mannered it is. And uh, yeah, Brian Tooley did his homework on the thing and it makes really good, really broad power. It'll be, be perfect in a heavy truck like it's going in. Every time we do one of these, I'm, I'm astonished at the amount of power that it makes. For something with 130,000 miles on it, they came into the shop out of the junkyard and looked like a shop vac fighting an octopus. To this 430 horsepower with nothing but a cam swap, I mean, that's, that's amazing. I didn't think it was gonna make north of 400 horsepower. And a little junkyard 5.3, you know, like Joe's description was pretty good. I thought it was like a rusty Medusa head came off the Titanic or something. It just, it looked terrible when you get them in there. You wonder if we're even gonna stick in one piece when you start it, you know. For it to make 430 horse and 430 torque, that's pretty amazing.